Yes, well, here we are with Mike Quackenbush, the great wrestler, the great trainer, and well, you are coming from from Argentina and from Chile, and that's that's why we are talking to you right now because we want to know more about you. And well, those who who are related to wrestling know about Mike Quackenbush, but how would you introduce yourself to someone that doesn't know about wrestling about you? Well, I've been working in professional wrestling for the last 30 years now, mostly as a wrestler. Mostly you would see me in the ring. But as you correctly pointed out, I'm also a trainer. I'm a coach as well. So many of the stars that you may see wrestling for WWE or AEW are trainees of mine. They are my protégés. In addition mm -hmm. to that, uh, I've written 10 books about wrestling. And I'm also the host of a YouTube channel all about wrestling called Till We Make It. So for the last 30 years, I've been working in a variety of ways. But this will be my first time coming to South America. I've never had the chance to visit Argentina. I've never had the chance to visit Chile until 2024. Well, uh... We we saw we und we understand uh, in one of your promos that you are eager to come here. Mm -hmm. uh, a great interest in in coming here. Uh, how this uh, race in this interest in you? Well, I guess there are two reasons. One, I am fascinated by wrestling from all over the world. It doesn't matter if it comes from Europe or it comes from Asia or it comes from South America. But also, for the last 14 years, I've been a very big fan of Titanes and El Ring. I got to get some recordings from the 1970s and 1980s, including one of the Titanes movies. So uh, during the span of a wrestling company that I ran called Chikara, some yeah. friends said to me, have you ever watched Titanes and El Ring? They're very similar, Chikara and Titanes. They're very colorful. They're fun. Uh, it's interesting for children. It's interesting for adults. We think you would like it. So I hunted some Titanes and El Ring down. Television episodes mostly, but also the one movie, which shows their great show from Luna Park in maybe 1972, 1973, yeah. something like this. Yeah, yeah. And I fell in love with it immediately. Uh, from the executive to the Viking, to the android, all of it. I just thought it was so colorful. It had such an energy and a verve to it. This was the first I learned of Argentine wrestling, but it really captured my imagination. Well, that was remarkable, but I, I saw one of, of the... You wrote that in... Something about that in one of my posts, which was an honor. Uh, We had no idea that you were uh, so fond of, of this uh, promotion, the Titanes and Orin. Uh, even though the, there's people in this country that is denying the importance of Titanes and Orin, but that is something great for us. I grew up looking uh, at, at this, at the shows, but the time was, was changing, and, and that style of, of wrestling is not... Uh, What are we doing here right now? Yes, and I think I, I appreciate it is uh, Martin Caradagian's, his daughter is bringing Titanes again. Yes, it's coming back yes, one yes. more time. I think the, the, uh, last last year there was a, a little uh, season of television. Yes, I'm excited because even though the style has changed, The stories and the characters are very important. And Titanes always understood the importance of great characters and great stories. Yes, you can update the wrestling style to be more modern. But I think there is room for Titanes and El Ring in today's wrestling. It just needs the style to be current. When we watch the great matches between Martin and La Momia, the style 
is of that time. All we need now is a fresh style, but the same great characters, the same color, the same fun as the original Titanes. I think it could be a great success. Classic, right? Caballero Rojo. Everyone loves yeah. this. I think, uh, I hope they get one more chance to maybe change their style a little bit because I do believe there's a chance for Titanes today. I want to see it. I want to see a modern Titanes and ring. Uh, I was thinking, hey, do you do you believe that some someone in in states took some of the, of the details of Titanes to uh, put together the shows up there? Uh, I, I I don't want to say copy, but inspire. Yes, for a short time. Titanes and El Ring could be watched in California. So there mm. absolutely were wrestlers and wrestling promoters who saw Titanes on television in the United States. It would come on very late at night, but almost only in California. But uh, a few years ago, I acquired some DVDs of Titanes mm. and El Ring. This is how I experienced it. And yes, it was definitely an inspiration. I think... Even, even if maybe you don't know some of the Argentine wrestlers, or maybe you feel like this style is too old, there are so many brilliant ideas in Titanes that are just waiting for someone to take that little spark and make a new fire and create their own wrestling. Well, uh, there are going to be a lot of people here that hearing what you say want to be shocking. But for me, <laughs> for me, it's a great a pride, because huh? mm. that was my, my childhood dream. Did you get to see Titanes live when you were a child, or you never got to see it? No, no, just just on TV. Mm. Um, and and that day, where, where the movie was um, uh, recorded mm -hmm. on Luna Park. Yes. That was great. Great way. I met my, most of the, of the people, the, most of the wrestlers that, that were fighting there. And that was amazing. Amazing for me. Uh, well, it, it was a big surprise, Mike. Really. <laughs> uh, now tell me, how did you decide to become a professional wrestler in the first place? I was inspired when I saw a Japanese wrestler on TV here in the United States, Jushin Thunder Liger. When I saw he had a cape and a mask, he reminded me of the superheroes that I loved, of the comic books that I read, because so many other wrestlers here in the United States, they were known really only for uh, their gigantic physiques, their big muscles, and I am not a big guy. I am a small mm -hmm. flyer. But when I saw Jushin Liger and the elegance that he flew through the ring in a colorful hero costume, I thought, that is what I want to do. I never wanted to be like Hulk Hogan or the Ultimate Warrior. Not that that can't be fun. It's fine. But it was not mm -hmm. for me. <laughs> so I took my love from the characters who reminded me most of the comic books I read and Jushin Liger and Tiger Mask. Uh, they were much closer to what I loved. So you're you're uh, fond of the comic books? Mm -hmm. Very much so. Oh well, just like me, yeah. <laughs> I'm a fan of DC Comics. Mm -hmm. Here I am, a, a Nightwing, please. Uh, for instance, <laughs> uh, here you have the Flash. Outstanding. Yeah. Well, uh, the time went by, and you became uh, the uh, trainer. That was yes. a transition between the wrestler and the trainer. How, how this took place? After I had been wrestling maybe eight or nine years, uh, I felt that in the United States, the style was not evolving. So we saw the influence of Lucha Libre come from Mexico with Rey mm -hmm. Mysterio Jr., Psychosis, La Parca, all of them came to the U.S. on WCW. 
Uh, mm -hmm. And to a smaller extent, also in a company called ECW, we got to see the Lucha style. Then mm -hmm. there was also a beautiful style from England, a very classic style from the 1970s and 80s of Johnny Saint and Johnny Kidd and Mike Jordan. They were very technical wrestlers, but a, mm -hmm. a very beautiful style. And of course, there's the influence from Japan. And I wanted all these things I wanted them to come together to make something new. There could be a new style if we put all these ingredients together. And that is why we decided to start our own training center. So I went from just being a wrestler to teaching as much as I could learn about these other styles of wrestling to others so that the U.S. wrestling scene could start to change. Um, and to this day, as I said at the very beginning, I love learning about the wrestling styles from all over the world. So, right, every little piece I can I can see, whether it comes from the UK or it comes from Mexico or it comes from Japan or it comes from Argentina, I want to see this come together and form a new style, a global style of wrestling. That excites me. Well, uh, this could be seen when, when you call yourself the man the master of South and Halls. Because <laughs> there's no many halls in the American style. <laughs> I had to travel all over the world to learn. Um, but that that's my great passion in wrestling, is to learn from as many people so then I can share it with others. And this is one of the things I most look forward to when I come to Argentina next month, when I visit Chile for the first time, to share what I've learned over the last 30 years with wrestlers, young and old, from South America. Uh, this is the most exciting part of the trip for me. Yeah, well, uh, I, I was wondering, did you ever met a guy or a, or a girl that's so tough that were beyond teaching? Well, you see, <laughs> the wrestling is not yours. Uh, this has happened to you? Yes. Uh, every once and again, someone, they try, and they try, and they try, but they don't progress as a student. So I must be very careful when I try to nudge them and say, maybe something different will work for you. Maybe you should be a referee. Maybe there is a different job in wrestling for you. There's so many jobs to do in wrestling and not yeah. all of them mean being in the ring because not everyone has the skill for that. And that's okay because we need everybody. Maybe your job is to be a camera person. Maybe your job is something behind the curtain to help. Maybe you are the referee. Maybe you're the ring announcer who stands in the center. There are many different jobs not everyone can do the job of a wrestler. Yes, yeah, that that was my my next question, but you already answered it. <laughs> uh, it it's difficult when you see a guy and you say, you know, wrestling is not your thing. Yeah, the most much illusion. Eh, the the people is uh, when I say eager to to wrestle on, on ring, but sometimes it can be done. Yes, and I always encourage people to try. If you are interested, if you have a passion for wrestling, try. But not everyone will succeed. That's yeah. not true in wrestling or anything else in life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, but that's a, a great message in, in, the, in the title, not till we make it. Mm -hmm. Try, try, try till we make it. No? That, that's yes. the, the point. Yes, exactly. Well, uh, really, it's, it's a great honor to, to talk to you. Uh, great surprise. Um, really, we are honored. Uh, I was wondering, um, what's the message for the wrestlers that are going to take the seminars that you're going to offer here in, here in Argentina and in Chile? No? Yes. What's your message for them? Well, thank you very much. I appreciate the kind words. And my message is uh, a lesson I learned 
many years ago, after I shared the ring, I had one match with Elijo del Santo, the son of Santo, one of the most famous luchadors ever. To me, the experience, it was very humbling. It taught me there is always some wrestler out there. They know more than you do. And if you really love wrestling, it is your job to find them and get them to teach you. You are never finished learning because every day wrestling changes. Every day wrestling grows. Wrestling evolves into its next style. And if you decide, I don't need to learn anymore. I don't need any more training. You have become obsolete. You are like the dinosaur now. You are waiting for everything to pass you by. Never be done learning. Never be done training. And maybe this is the only time I will ever make it to Argentina or to Chile in my life. If this is our one chance to get in the ring together so that I can share my knowledge, please come see me. This may be our only chance to do the dance. Great. Uh, I, I guess that you are going to wrestle too here. Yes, that's true. I, I'm, I am so excited that I'll be wrestling for Quilombo Wrestling. Um, to wrestle in Buenos Aires, uh, especially because of my great love of Titanes and because I have followed Quilombo Wrestling for the last three years. I've seen them grow. I have seen them become a leader in Argentine wrestling. All these things together. I feel very lucky that I get to wrestle in Argentina. Do you do you know your rival yet or or no, not yet? Not yet. Not yet. I hope soon. I'm <laughs> I'm very interested to find out. <laughs> well, uh, in in that case, you're you are looking for videos of, of the other guy to get the, the start to get the, the um, low points. Is that uh, what you usually do? Absolutely. I love to study. Uh, I, I want to be as prepared as possible. I feel like it is my responsibility. That is the professional part of being a professional wrestler, is to show up to the ring as prepared as I possibly can be so the public is never disappointed. When I let the public down, I have failed myself. All right. Well, it was... Once again, a great honor, and I'm very pleased to meet you here and looking forward to see you when you come uh, to take a picture with you, to my collection. The pleasure was and... mine, Rafael. Thank you. And I'm very much looking forward to making the trip down. I look forward to meeting you. I understand somewhere they've made a small monument to Martin Caradagian commemorating yeah. Titanes. I want to find this while I'm there. I must make a visit myself and pay my respect to the titan well, of Titanes. If you want, I, I could go with you. It's in in the Recoleta Cemetery. Ah, it's in Recoleta. Yes. You will lead the way. I will buy the coffee. We'll do it. <laughs> well, that's, that's a meeting, huh? Well, Mike, once again, uh, thank you very much. Uh, welcome to Argentina. Welcome to Chile. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. I'll see you soon. All right. Well. <laughs>